The mayor of a predominantly white city is using his story to connect with people from across the country. Vanessa Mishanya shares his message that there is no limit to what's possible. I was born in Kansas City. I was raised by a very hardworking woman. Uh, never met my father in my life. The path Kansas City Mayor Quinton Lucas took to the 29th story of City Hall was not that of its previous tenants. We'd been kicked out of an apartment that we were staying in, and we moved to a motel, one of those hourly motels. I would do like my schoolwork in the bathroom at like, 4 a.m. I mean, that, that stuck with me ever since. And probably the thing that made me strange enough to be a politician was that tells you how to live within two different worlds. Sometimes you're trying to figure out where meals are coming from, you're trying to scrap every dollar together, but then there's the daytime when you're at school and you need to be lively and fun and interesting and nobody wants to hear about your drama. You know, that was me. And that is what I'm most interested in making sure that we uh, can get across to people that life isn't you know, singular. Everybody has this story that is a lot more interesting and diverse than we think. Mayor Q's story might be different than many leaders in the predominantly white Midwest, but his story is similar to so many across the nation, figuring out how to rise when the odds, the system are stacked against you. First step, I think, for young people is recognizing they can do anything. Don't let your community around you today, your family keep you from thinking you can do anything. I ask young people, do you want to come back to Kansas City when you're an adult? And I'm, granted, I think in a lot of cities they'd be like, no, I hate it here, because they know it for the world that's around them. But I get to hear, right, well, what do you want? What do you want long term? And what attracts you to these places? You've never been to New York or New Orleans, right? What's cool about it? And they'll say, oh, it's this culture, it's this, that, and the other. And I'm like, we have that. We just need to let you know about it. We need to let you know that there's a place where you can fit in if you look different, feel different, love different than perhaps the majority of the group you're around. And, and we need to do that more in middle America. As someone who came back to the city that raised him with the intention of making a difference, his message to anyone who might feel left out of the conversation is that there is room for anyone of all backgrounds. It is message for leaders is that it's up to those in power to make sure their eyes are open to that. From the job of some, whether you're in the Midwest or the South, or if you're in the Bronx, or if you're in places where a bunch of folks may have been there for a while and may not know everything that they can be, is to say, well, look, not only do I think I'm an example of, of what you can be, but I came back for a reason. And I think that it's important for me to make sure people know that they're important and they're useful. I'm Vanessa Mishan, you're reporting. Thank you for joining us this week as we recognize Black History Month. Join us next week as we talk about democracy, how disinformation and distrust is threatening our elections and the people dedicated to running them. Until then, from Delwood, Missouri, I'm Chris Stewart, and this is The Race.